Yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Liu. Thank you, Sachin. Uh, and good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the audiences. Uh, a special welcome to our president, Professor Yokokato, and two of our distinguished speakers uh, from Japan, and also uh, our, our colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, without further ado, I would like to call upon our president, Professor Kato, Kato to give a, a welcome speech, Professor. Hi, hi everyone. So just I, uh, Sachin already, uh, he showed us the, uh, the video of the late Professor Kano, uh, that he uh, was uh, the, the founder president of the Asian Congress. He passed away uh, almost two weeks back, uh, August 6, early in the morning. So the, due to some uh, the head trauma, the, after two weeks, uh, he uh, demise, uh, demise. So just we need to follow his uh, great passion and enthusiasm to uh, educate young neurosurgeons. And also the great stamina, I think. Uh, he has a very high energy and high uh, uh, the stamina for education anytime, all the time, I think. Uh, I, I and all uh, we are very appreciate that his uh, steps. And maybe we need to follow his steps. Uh, thank you very much. And today uh, we have a very nice, uh, good to uh, Japanese uh, the lecture, and also the uh, two YNS lectures. Uh, I think the four lectures uh, would be very great for the young <laughs> young neuroscientist. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, may I ask uh, Dr. Sul Shamima Sultana to introduce our first speaker, please? Dr. Shamima? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, Dr. Shatin. Thank you. Would you please uh, share your screen? Yeah. Are you able to hear? No, I am not. Uh, yeah. Uh, good evening and welcome you all to today's, uh, uh, today's SCNS Young Neurosurgical Association's webinar. And I, I especially am um, uh, very much grateful to Professor Yoko Tato, man. Uh, hello, ma'am. And uh, now I am introducing uh, our first speaker, uh, who is uh, Professor uh, Kazuhito Takeuchi. Uh, he completed his uh, medical school. Uh, from Yamansi Medical University to City, Yamansi, at uh, 19, 19, 1998 to 2004. And uh, he completed his internship from 2004 to 2006 from Honda Hospital, Honda City, IT. And um, he became a residence in neurosurgery in Nagoa University, that is the hospital in Nagoa City, IT, from 2009 to 2012. And uh, currently, he is uh, working as a clinical associate professor in Department of Neurosurgery, Nagoa University, IT, Japan. Uh, professor now uh, working as ex executive board member of International Federation of Neuroendoscopy. He is also a member of Japan Neurosurgical Society, member of Japanese Society of, for Skull-Based Surgery, and member of Japanese Congress for Brain Tumor Surgery, and he's counselor of Japanese Society for Neuroendoscopy, and member of Japanese Endocrinology Society, and he's also a member of Japanese Society for Hypothalamic and Pituitary Tumors. Professor Kazuhito has more than 30 peer-reviewed uh, scientific articles, and his special interest is in endoscopic surgery. Now I am welcoming Professor to present uh, his uh, today's lecture. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you, Dr. Sachin. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this excellent conference. Oh, now, let's share the, okay. Uh, I'm Dr. Takeuchi from Nagoya University, Japan. Uh, today's my topic is, is in this.
copic transfinoidal surgery. Sorry. Uh, endoscopic transfinoidal surgery is the first line treatment for pituitary adenomas. Uh, it is not difficult to improve the patient neurosurg uh, neurological symptom with developing surgery, especially in the uh, non functioning pituitary adenomas. Then, uh, what is the difference between the beginners and the experts? I think uh, the answer is complication rate. The complication can be induced by a neurosurg neuro neurosurgeon's hands. Uh, complication in the transphenoidal surgery for non-functioning pituitary adenoma is yeah, the uh, post-operative hemorrhage due to the residual tumor and uh, uh, post-operative pituitary dysfunction due to the uh, injury of pituitary gland and post-operative CSF leakage due to the lack of adequate reconstruction. In addition to this, in the functioning pituitary adenoma cases, uh, extremely uh, low endocrinological remission rate is also the uh, complication, I think. So the, today's my topic is a technique for reducing the uh, complication rate and improve the uh, remission rate. This is a typical transphenoidal surgery for non-functioning pituitary adenoma. Uh, this 57-year-old uh, male appeared with uh, uh, visual disturbance and the MRI with the uh, uh, very usual uh, pituitary adenoma uh, that is uh, embedded slightly into the uh, left cavernous sinus like that. And uh, uh, this tumor also have a, a cystic compartment like that. In this surgery, this is not so difficult. We perform the, uh, we open the uh, sinus and uh, open the cella as large as possible, especially in the uh, left side. First three, uh, debarking is performed. Fortunately, the tumor is uh, soft and suckable, so uh, it's not so difficult to remove it. We suck up the tumor and uh, remove the tumor inside the left cavernous sinus, like this. Now we can see the ICA here. And uh, this is a normal pituitary gland. We follow the uh, border like that. It's not so difficult. And uh, this is the uh, arachnoid membrane here. Now we are removing the tumor behind the arachnoid membrane. It's complexing the uh, uh, arachnoid here. Uh, here is the posterior pituitary gland, so uh, we have to uh, pay attention not to injure the uh, posterior pituitary gland. Now the uh, gross total removal was achieved, and we put the uh, uh, duracell and surgery inside the cera. Then suture the dura and put the uh, local mucosal flap inside the sphenoid sinus and uh, apply the uh, fibrin glue like that. That's all. It's not so difficult. Uh, this is a post op CT. A gross total removal was achieved, and there are no hematoma here. And after three months, uh, the tumor uh, uh, completely disappeared like this. Uh, pituitary adenoma are generally soft and suckable. So uh, in general, no functioning pituitary adenoma can be removed without any trouble, like a previous case. But in some cases, the tumor is fibrous and non suckable. So uh, it is difficult to achieve the gross total removal or with the suction technique only. In these cases, uh, there is a risk of post-operative he uh, hematoma formation and recurrence due to the residual tumor. Look at this case. Uh, this case has a, a relatively large pituitary adenoma. We uh, performed a, a suction technique, but uh, after the surgery, patient had a uh, hematoma formation inside the cell, 
fortunately, this patient doesn't have uh, uh, any uh, optic disturbance, but uh, uh, there is a risk of uh, uh, visual disturbance after surgery. So look at this case. Uh, uh, this 48-year-old male appears a visual disturbance and the uh, uh, contrast enhanced uh, MRI showed the uh, uh, linear contrast effect here within the tumor. Uh, this predicts that the uh, tumor is fibrous and hard. In such case, uh, uh, it's very difficult to achieve the gross total removal with a uh, uh, suction technique only. In such case, we perform the extra capsular dissection technique. The tumor is fibrous. After the adequate decompression, we can uh, dissect the tumor from the normal pituitary gland, like this, like a mini joma surgery. Then we can uh, achieve the gross total removal without damaging to the uh, uh, normal pituitary gland, like this. In this case, uh, we could achieve the gross total removal without uh, 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 hematoma formation like that. Uh, extra capsular dissection is known as an effective technique for functioning in ad adenomas. Uh, but this technique is still controversial for non-functioning pituitary uh, adenoma. This is because a uh, uh, shoot capsule of the uh, pituitary adenoma is generally compressed, normal pituitary gland. Uh, shoot capsule is not a, a tumor cell. Uh, therefore, uh, shoot, capsule uh, shoot capsule dissection can be a cause of pituitary dysfunction. However, the uh, uh, removal of the giant fibrous or, or hemorrhagic non-functioning pituitary adenoma with intercapsular dissection suction technique is quite difficult to achieve the gross total removal. If gross total removal could not be achieved, uh, there is a risk of post-operative hematoma formation. In such limited case, giant fibrous hem uh, hemorrhagic non-functioning adenoma case, Extra capsular dissection technique should be adopted. Look at this case. Uh, if you don't take care of your health, you will also become like that in five years' time. Hmm? Can you hear? Oh, uh, we can hear, Professor. Please go ahead. Is it okay? Yes, yes, it's okay. Perfectly okay. Okay. Hmm. Extra capsular dissection is helpful for gross total removal and uh, prevention of the uh, post-operative hematoma formation. But the uh, uh, detection and the protect of the uh, pituitary gland is essential. Uh, look at this case. Uh, this case has uh, a T2 low adenoma. So uh, this predicts uh, a fibrous adenoma. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the uh, tumor was uh, surrounded by the uh, normal pituitary gland, like that. In general, the uh, normal pituitary gland is located in the uh, uh, lateral side, but uh, in this case, the uh, uh, normal pituitary gland was uh, uh, located uh, circumferentially, like that. In such case, uh, uh, extra capsular dissection is uh, a little bit difficult. After the adequate decompression, we perform the uh, dissection of the uh, tumor from the surrounding tissue like that. But at this moment, because uh, this is a tumor, but uh, this is a normal pituitary gland. So oh, this plane is a pituitary capsule, not a tumor capsule. Therefore, oh, if you remove the uh, tumor uh, at this plane, you will remove the uh, normal pituitary gland completely. So we have to cut the uh, pituitary capsule a little bit. After that, dissect the tumor from the normal pituitary gland. like this, then you can see the uh, clear uh, surgical plane here. 
and normal pseudo gland is here and the tumor is here. In this patient, uh, we could achieve the uh, gross total removal with uh, damaging to the uh, normal pituitary gland. Uh, another complication is uh, CSF leakage. Uh, I usually use the dual suturing technique for the uh, uh, recon reconstruction of the cell. I guess you think the dual suturing is difficult. Actually, it's not so easy, but uh, uh, it's not so difficult. You can't twist the needle in the uh, deep surgical field like uh, skin suturing, but uh, only you can uh, do the uh, pull and push, move up and down and left, right, and rotating movement. That's all. But uh, uh, it's not so difficult. Hold the needle like a hook and just pull. Look at this, needle like a hook and just pull, just pull. This is very simple movement. I usually put a, a fat graft inside the cera. Uh, this is an ex extended transcendental surgery case, but still I only put a, a fat graft and suture the dura and the fat graft like that it's very simple movement our surgical technique is pu uh, published in the literature so uh, you if you're interested in this technique please read this article it's not so uh, difficult so uh, please try it uh, now move to the functioning pituitary adenoma cases in functioning pituitary adenoma cases, uh, gross total removal is not sometimes enough for end endocrinological remission. To achieve better endocrinological outcome, we should try to remove all tumor cells. Gross total removal is not enough. Look at this. We perform the uh, extra capsular dissection in the uh, functioning adenoma cases. Now, uh, should the capsule is also removed like that. And uh, gross total removal was achieved. But in some cases, uh, uh, extra capsule dissection is not always uh, uh, possible. That is because uh, uh, pituitary adenoma uh, does, uh, sometimes does not have the uh, shoot capsule. Only 50% cases have a uh, uh, shoot capsule. Uh, in such case, we perform these kind of surgical techniques. Uh, if the tumor does not have a shoot, shoot capsule, we have to peel off the uh, normal pituitary gland a little bit. After the removal of the uh, tumor, we cut a normal pituitary gland a little bit. Then the normal pituitary gland can be peeled off. Uh, this patient does not have a shoot capsule, so there is a, a risk of uh, uh, tumor invasion to the normal pituitary gland. So oh, we peel off the uh, normal pituitary gland a little bit. like this. Of course, uh, uh, we have to pay attention not to injure the uh, normal pituitary function. So uh, only few millimeter, uh, less than one millimeter uh, peel off can be done. But uh, 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 if the tumor uh, is uh, uh, attached to the uh, cavernous sinus medial wall here, uh, we remove the uh, cavernous sinus uh, media wall of the cavernous sinus. Sorry, look at this. Uh, this is a media wall of the cavernous sinus. Sometimes tumor is embedded into the uh, cavernous sinus, so 
we dissect the uh, uh, common sense like that. Uh, there's a uh, ligament here. We cut it, and there's a tumor, small tumor here. Of the dissection, we put the surgery inside the carbon sinus, then cut the uh, medial wall in the uh, most posterior side, like that, and remove it. Of course, this is a common sinus, so or severe bleeding is occurred, sometimes occurs. So we make a new uh, medial wall with a uh, uh, surgery cell and fibrin glue. It's not so difficult and achieve the gross total removal. Sorry. Uh, the remission is uh, remission rate is improved. Uh, before performing these uh, surgical techniques, uh, we could achieve only 63%. Uh, no, I think this is a, a average result in the world, but uh, uh, nowadays we perform the, uh, th these kind of techniques, so we could achieve the 90% of the remission rate. Uh, so, Aggressive removal of the, uh, 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 the tumor can improve the remission rate. Uh, we also publish these surgical techniques. Uh, please read these articles. But in the Cushing disease cases, uh, this technique is not always enough. This 68-year-old female uh, had a, a very typical Cushing disease. We perform the uh, extra capsular dissection technique for this case. And uh, all should capsule is removed. Like that. Then remove the uh, medial wall of the cavernous sinus. This is a common sinus, so or sometimes a, a severe breathing occurred. We control the uh, hemorrhage with the placement of the surge cell. Like that. Cut the uh, media wall. All wall was removed like that. I guess you think uh, this such uh, uh, removal is too much, but actually it's necessary to achieve the uh, complete remission. After the removal of the, uh, this part, in the Cushing disease, we have to see the opposite side. Uh, here is a small tumor. So we remove this part. After the surgery, the uh, patient uh, uh, recovered very, very well. And uh, Cushing disease was, uh, the, uh, uh, the mission of the Cushing disease was achieved. And this is a, a pathological diagnosis. Of course, a uh, uh, light size is HCTH uh, positive cells like that, but the uh, uh, left side is also HCTH positive. So uh, there may be uh, multiple regions in Cushing disease. Observation of the normal pituitary gland nearby the cavernous sinus should be performed in all Cushing disease cases. This is very important in the uh, Cushing disease. So the conclusion is here. Uh, extra capsule dissection technique is useful not only for the uh, functioning adenoma, but also the uh, non-functioning pituitary adenoma cases. But the identification of the normal pituitary gland is important to prevent the uh, pituitary dysfunction. 
uh, radical removal is required for uh, better endocrine neurological result and uh, uh, no fun uh, functioning pituitary in my cases. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. I think we can take some questions now and then we'll go ahead with the next topic. What do you say, Dr. Liu? Yeah, sure. Sure, Sachin. Yes. Uh, any questions from the uh, analyst? So, Professor Kazaito, I have a question. Uh, yeah. It's very nice technique of extracapsular dissection you have showed. But I think that is possible only when, when the tumor is soft. Sometimes we do get the patients who have already had some treatment with cabergolin or some treatment sometimes with the radiation also. And in that case, the tumors are very firm. So what kind of technique do you recommend in such a situation? Uh, if the patient had a cabergolin treatment, uh, that, is, that means the uh, 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 yes. Uh, I don't perform the uh, surgical removal for the prolactinomas. Uh, that okay. is because uh, we can treat it with uh, uh, medication therapy. Okay. There's no need to perform the uh, transfusional surgery. And uh, if the patient had a uh, uh, radiation therapy, uh, that is not so difficult, I think. Uh, uh, after the radiation therapy, there is a uh, very hard shoot capsule. Yes. So oh, I think we can remove the uh, uh, shoot. Uh, we we can perform the extra capsule dissection in such a very solid uh, shoot capsule. Uh, okay. Yeah. So oh, it's not so difficult. And uh, uh, the most important important thing is. The uh, reoperation case. In the reoperation case, uh, uh, sometimes the uh, 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 should capsule is already uh, uh, damaged by the uh, previous surgery. So in such case, uh, we recommend the uh, uh, intercapsular uh, removal technique. One more question from the set. Do you induce any intra hypotension uh, or rather at what blood pressure do you prefer to operate? Because sometimes some patients, they have a very vascular mucosa and the whole thing will become very bleeding and uh, it will be very difficult to operate. So you, do you induce any hypotension during your surgeries or what manual you use when there is a very bleeding hypotension. mucosa? Mm, no, I don't use such kind of technique. Uh, if if you remove the uh, mucosa from the uh, clivus or some other uh, area, uh, 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 if you remove the mucosa uh, uh, nearby the sinus, uh, you will have a severe breathing. But if you don't remove the mucosa in, uh, nearby the uh, sinus, there's no breathing, no problem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. But the dural suture technique for the young neurosurgeon, I think we need more practice. It's very difficult to go there. Yeah, it's not so difficult. Actually, my resident performed uh, suturing technique okay. in the first time. <laughs> no, oh. no problem. Please, please okay. try it. Yeah. Okay. Any other question from the panelists? Hello, Professor. Uh, can I ask some questions? Yes. Yeah, uh, I have three, three questions, Professor. Uh, how often do we need to identify the hypophysia? Sorry. My second question, Professor, do you encounter uh, the hypophysia artery? Do we need to identify it early in the surgery to avoid injury? Uh, my second question, Professor, do you encounter any problem to use surgical together with fibrin glue? Does, does it cause the fibrin glue to act uh, abnormally or do not function that well? Uh, my third question, Professor, how often can we uh, repeat transphenoidal endoscopic procedure in recurrent cases? Thank you, Professor. 
first question is a uh, uh, hypophysiology. Yes, yes, professor. Yes, yes. Uh, in the uh, media world, the carbon science removal. Yeah, uh, I sometimes encounter the inferior uh, inferior hypophysial artery, capsular arteries, uh, but uh, we can coagulate it uh, inside the carbon signs. It's not so difficult to identify it, so oh, there's no problem. And uh, uh, and coagulation and cutting the uh, inferior uh, hypophysial artery cannot be a cause of pituitary dysfunction. It's not so big problem. I think. And the uh, uh, second question, what did, uh, I, I forgot it, <laughs> sorry. Uh, use surgical cell with fibrin glue, together with fibrin uh, glue. Cell and fibrin. Yeah, do you yeah. encounter any problem? I, with uh, no problem. Uh, nowadays, I uh, use uh, duragen, collagen, collagen matrix to uh, make a uh, uh, wall. It's much easier, but uh, there's no problem. And third question. Uh, for, for recurrent cases, how many times can we repeat endoscopic transphenoidal procedure? Uh, that, uh, that is a uh, mm, difficult question. That big, that's because uh, I usually perform the uh, I don't have a, a, a in, uh, sorry, maybe three or four times I performed, but uh, there's no uh, uh, problem in such cases. Thank, mm, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Any other question from the panelists? Dr. Chen is there. Hello, Dr. Chen. You have yes. to unmute yourself. Hi, nice to meet Hi. you again. Yeah, so how often you are doing pituitary surgery? Do you want to ask any question to Professor Kazuhito? <laughs> I'm not a, um, a neurosurgeon for the pituitary uh, surgery. Uh, my colleague do this, I just watch. Uh, I have a simple, uh, small question. How to judge uh, the tissue, the pituitary tissue is soft or hard? Um, um, am I before the surgery? Before surgery, then we can do the preparation. Um, uh, uh, we can uh, resect it totally, or we need uh, 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 another technique. Yeah. Uh, it's a By little bit shape. difficult to predict uh, fib uh, yeah, uh, fibrous or soft, uh, but. Uh, uh, if the diffusion tensor imaging showed a high intensity, uh, that is uh, uh, relatively uh, fibrous. And uh, if the T2 low tumors, uh, it's generally a little bit hard. And uh, uh, if the contrast enhanced MRI showed the uh, 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 lines inside the uh, tumor. Uh, uh, yeah, that is uh, uh, that uh, that predict uh, uh, fibrous tumor. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, it's a little bit difficult. Mm. Oh. Uh, but uh, uh, so we have to have uh, many techniques for removal before performing this surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, shall we um, judge, uh, judge the tissue uh, by the shape? Someone told me if mm. you see it, it around the uh, round the cycle and the shape, it looks uh, harder because they have uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a tough uh, capsule. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes if yeah. the tumor is look like a brick cone, say like a flower, mm -hmm. and then that means yeah, the tissue yeah, yeah, is softer, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, okay. of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. Multilocated to tumor is generally soft. Okay. Multilocated tumor. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. And uh, another, I'm thinking, um, uh, how uh, how to uh, judge uh, the pituitary uh, uh, different ways the normal tissue. Sometimes it's, it's thicker, 
it depends on mm -hmm. the uh, normal uh, in the pituitary. And uh, if we cannot watch totally uh, the tumor shape, we maybe we can uh, we have to <laughs> take the tumor with the normal tissue out. It, um, how to buy eyes? We can differ them. It's normal. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the important thing is uh, 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 normal pituitary gland mm -hmm. uh, is located always located around the uh, uh, pituitary, uh, pituitary adenomal. So uh, I mean, the, uh, after cutting the dura, mm -hmm. you can see the uh, tumor here, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. that is not the tumor. Uh, the tumor is always covered by the uh, pituitary capsule, not tumor, tumor capsule. Uh, mm -hmm. pituitary, uh, uh, after cutting the dura, you can see the pituitary capsule, and then cut the pituitary capsule, you can see the uh, shoot tumor capsule. There is always pituitary capsule, so you have to dissect the uh, 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 shoot tumor capsule and pituitary capsule first. Mm -hmm. That is a little bit difficult, but uh, uh, if you can do it, uh, you cannot remove the normal pituitary gland. And uh, I always use a uh, uh, 30 degree end scope, not de zero degree end scope. You have to look around the corner, then you can find the normal pituitary ground much easier. Please uh, use the 30 degree end scope. And uh, uh, normal pituitary ground generally attached to the carbon sinus, you know? So yeah. or, or if you watch the uh, carbon sign site with a 30 degree end scope, you can find the uh, uh, normal pituitary ground. Okay, so uh, first we can find the tumor, then we can uh, resect the tumor. And the second step is um, look around first of step, the tissue. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. First step yeah. is uh, cutting dura without uh, cutting the uh, pituitary capsule. Oh, okay. Not to damage the pituitary capsule. Oh. Uh, I think you cut the dura uh, with the uh, pituitary capsule and the tumor like that. Uh, after the cutting the dura, the uh, tumor come come out from the cell. Yeah, yeah. That is uh, very difficult to uh, find the normal pituitary gland. So uh, the first step is not to injure the pituitary capsule. Okay. That is a very important thing. Okay. Thank you. What, what about the cutter? The hmm? pituitary normal grand. What about the uh, normal, uh Yeah, cutter really? is uh, generally the uh, reddish compared to the uh, uh, pituitary. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Normal pituitary grand is a. Uh, little bit late compared to the uh, adenomas. And uh, uh, the uh, normal pituitary gland is a, a little bit harder than the uh, adenomas. So uh, I think you can find it. Thanks. Thank you. Professor, uh, uh, hello, Mr. Professor. Peter, you'll, have to your, you'll have to unmute yourself. Uh, hello, um, my name is Wei Xing Wang from Taiwan. May I have a question? Yes. Yes, yes. Sure. Go yeah, ahead. Professor. Yeah, thank you for your wonderful lecture. And uh, I, I did a lot of uh, uh, pituitary surgery in Taiwan uh, currently. And I, I think that it was to aggressive attack the cavernous sinus if uh, the tumor invaded or contact, uh, especially for the functional tumor. Um, my uh, question is, uh, is I, I'm interested about your last case uh, you present, the cushion case. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. It seems a very uh, well-defined tumor over the left side, uh, pituitary fossa, but I, I saw you, you explore the right side, uh, pituitary fossa as well uh, for the, re the, the, the second tumor. And uh, that's my question. Is this uh, the technique you will always do uh, for the cushion case? Because uh, for cushion, uh, sometimes it's very hard to to see the very well 
uh, a small tumor. And uh, for the second tumor in the same pituitary fossa, uh, sometimes it may be the reason for the residual or not remission. Uh, so uh, just my uh, wondering uh, your technique and your rationale. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, I always see the uh, opposite side of the uh, uh, tumor. Uh, tumor, sorry, uh, uh, pituitary gland uh, attached to the uh, common signs. I always see it. And uh, 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 in the Cushing, uh, Cushing sorry, ACTHOMA uh, is located nearby the uh, common signs, always nearby the common signs. Of course, uh, 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 some special case, uh, they have a uh, very multiple <laughs> adenoma. So, uh, of course, in such case, we can, could not, uh, can't achieve the uh, uh, end, endocrinological remission with this technique. But uh, uh, generally, the uh, adenoma located, in the, in the, located nearby the current science. So I always see opposite side of the uh, pituitary gland. And uh, if the uh, tumor, uh, uh, exist the uh, very small uh, liquid is uh, uh, come out from the normal pituitary gland. Then uh, cut the normal pituitary gland and find it. I always do it. Yeah, thank you. But yeah. uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, you are afraid of the uh, pituitary dis dysfunction in this technique. But uh, I, I don't have any uh, pituitary dysfunction case in this technique. So uh, don't worry about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. And thank you for participation from Taiwan, Doctor. Thank you very much. Dr. Pizza, do you want to ask something? Uh, yes. Hello. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. And. Uh, uh, I like to ask uh, Professor Dokuchi about uh, we are, we can't uh, operate transspinal pituitary tumors, but uh, a lot of cases that operated outside of Afgan Afghanistan come from outside and with a complication of C syphilis and also recurrent meningitis. How uh, is your advice for? Uh, management of like uh, these complications uh, and in situation like uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, thank you. Mm. I think the uh, my answer is suturing the dura. Uh, that is, uh, uh, if you perform the craniotomy, uh, you will suture the dura usually. Uh, in the transplant surgery, uh, we have to suture the dura. As uh, like as a craniotomy case. Uh, of course, uh, 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 vascularized uh, uh, septal flap is a, a very good uh, reconstruction technique, but uh, a patient have a, a nasal discomfort after surgery. So uh, I dislike it. So uh, I put uh, uh, a large fat graft inside the cera and suture the drill. That's all. It's not so difficult technique. Okay. Thank you. So, Dr. Thank Takeuchi, you. you have a special instrument for suturing of the dura. Uh, no, uh, I don't have any uh, special uh, really? instrument. So, so Professor uh, Nagata, yeah. Nagatani instrument, isn't it? Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, that is a very usual pituitary forceps. Mm -hmm. That is enough. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I, I think the problem in suturing is to push the knot inside. So mm. the special instrument Professor Kato is talking about is that, you know, three hooked, uh, small, very micro ah, pusher. No. You don't use that. Okay. I don't use it. Okay. Uh, the uh, link curate is enough for oh. uh, sending the knot. Okay. okay. Um, any other questions from panelists? Uh, maybe we can take the second talk and then come back to the questions. Otherwise, uh, yes. we'll go ahead for the second talk, Dr. Liu. 
Yes, Sachin, please. Yes, thank you. So uh, I would request uh, Dr. Thomas Tommy from Indonesia to kindly introduce our next speaker, Dr. Nakao Otani, please. Good day and good evening. Thank you, Dr. Sachin. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, our next speaker, um, Professor Naoki Otani, with the topic of direct surgical strategies for paracellar tumors. And Professor Naoki Otani had graduated from Department of Neurosurgery National Defense Medical College in Saitama, Japan, and now uh, is a professor in Department of Neurosurgery in Nihon University School of Medicine in Tokyo, Japan. And he had a lot of uh, uh, professional affiliations from Japan Neurosurgical Society, Japan Society of Neurotraumatology, and Japan Society of Neuroendoscopic Surgery, Japan Society of Surgery for Cerebral Stroke, Japanese Society of Cerebral Blood Flow and Metabolism, and Japan Society of Emergency Neurosurgery, Japan Society of Cranial Based Neurosurgery from uh, 93 to 2003, with uh, some honors and awards for, as a travel awards in uh, 2061st Annual Meeting of Japan Neurosurgical Society in 2002, a couple of awards and some scholarship, a uh, best scholarship award, Galenus Memorial Award for 2003 academic year in Japan Neurosurgical Society with interest in skull based tumor, cerebral aneurysm, bypass surgery, and MVD. So, uh, Professor, I would like to uh, invite you to uh, share your screen and give your lecture uh, this evening. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for introducing me, uh, Professor. So, wait just a moment, please. Okay. Can Can you um, Can you see my slide? Yes, Professor. Can you hear me? Okay. 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 okay let's get started. So uh, and I'm very grateful, thanks to uh, Professor Yoko Kato for invitation for, of this opportunity. And thank you for arrangement of this seminar, Dr. Sachin. And today's my talk is about uh, direct surgical strategies uh, for paracellular tumors. And in particular, in particular uh, I will focus on the extradural temporal approach and mention about epidural surgical procedure in detail. So uh, let's get started. And uh, originally, Professor Day uh, has uh, developed uh, Dorent's approach uh, as an extradural temporal approach. Um, but uh, this approach uh, provides us wide epidural space, wide epidural space enough to expose the uh, anterior cranial process entirely. Uh, therefore, we can drill it away safely. On the other hand, this technique needs the extensive peeling of the dura propria of the lateral capital sinus. So uh, there is a risk of the cranial nerve injury during a dural peeling. So uh, as mentioned at the beginning, this approach has several, several advantages to remove the paracellular region. Uh, with reducing the risk of intraoperative neurovascular injury. So early confounds uh, and the decompression of the optic nerve with precise and early orientation and early vascularization and detachment uh, of the tumors. So this approach can get a wide lateral carotid space, which enable us to uh, approach interpeduncular system safely. So in this approach, we have to cut the meningovital band and peel the dura propria. So therefore we have to know these 
two uh, uh, important anatomical structures. So firstly, many orbital band is a periosteral fold between the periorbital and the temporal lobe. At the beginning of this approach, many, uh, many orbital band and the orbital apex should be exposed entirely. Second, the lateral walls of the lateral cavernous sinus is composed from the two dual layers, uh, such as uh, the uh, dura propria of the temporal lobe and the inner reticular layer. So can, can you see? Excuse me. Uh, we, can can see, we, can see. We, we can see, we can see, Professor. Please go ahead. Uh, ju just a moment. Uh, so my uh, slide has, uh, excuse me, can, can you uh, see the, my slide? Yes, we Are can we see. Able to see it? Yes. Uh, ha, ha. Sorry, uh, so my, my uh, personal, uh, okay, so next. Can, can you see? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay, yes, yes, sorry, sorry. So the, uh, so two dura layers, uh, so lateral wall of the cavernous sinus is composed of the two dura layers, dura propria of the temporal lobe and the inner reticular membrane. So we have to peel the uh, lateral cavernous sinus uh, with the dura propria. So we have to know the okay. such anatomical, anatomical uh, component in this uh, approach. And uh, anterior culinary process is anchored with uh, three bony structures, lesser wing of the uh, spinoid bone, roof of the optic canal and the optic strut. Therefore, there are three structures that have to be removed for complete uh, anterior cholinoidectomy. The subita, super, uh, superior orbital fissure is located in the inferior lateral part of the anterior coronal process. So at first, I will show the extradural anterior cholinoidectomy. Super, uh, superior orbital fissure was skeletonized and unroofing, as you see. So this area sur surrounding blue line is, was, uh, can be removed. So many orbital band was cut and the peeling of the duroprepria on the inner reticular layer, you see. It. So you can, uh, you can see the various cranial nerves uh, at that time. So I will show you the, this approach using a thematic illustration in detail. So first, we, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you should skeletonize and unroofing the superorbital fissure to, to expose the junction between the two dual layers uh, in the reticular layer. So I will show the reason why the, uh, do we need the unroofing of the superorbital fissure. There are three coronal sections uh, on the superorbital fissure, foramen rotundum and foramen ovale. The most important thing is that Dura propria invaginated uh, into the superior fissure like this. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, in the from Lotundum and Obale, there is no such invagination. Therefore, to expose the junction of the two dura layers and roofing the superior fissure will be needed. So next, the peeling of the dura propria can be started anywhere, but uh, we can easily confirm the inner reticular layer at the point of the foramen rotundum. Next, uh, cutting the periosteal dura between the ophthalmic nerve and the maxillary nerve to avoid the cranial nerve injury because there is no cranial nerve running here. So the peeling is continued until the anterior crinoid process is ex exposed entirely. After peeling of the lateral capital sinus, and do a dissection at the frontal side, you can see the optic canal extradurally. Then you can expose the fully anterior process as green line. So next, 
and roofing of the optic canal is done, like yellow line. Remnant at that time, remnant of the anticlinal process, which consists uh, of the just of the optic strut, finally seeing the tips of anticlinal process. So next, I will show the several cranial, uh, clinical cases. Uh, this case is a tuberculosis meningioma, uh, not so large in diameter, but how left visual acuity is gradually worsening, finally just only the light perception. So I will show you the video uh, on these uh, cases. So after left side front temporal craniotomy, uh, we usually institute the lumbar drainage to get the full exposure of the uh, epidural space. Uh, but in this case, we cannot perform the lumbar drainage, then I dissect the cerebral fissure. So as I mentioned in the illustrated uh, slide, Meningo orbital band was uh, fully uh, dissected and drilled out, and just only the orbital uh, apex uh, was just opened at the beginning of the drilling and the sphenoidal reach. So you see at that time, lesser wing of the sphenoid bone was removed. And next, uh, you see the uh, orbital apex was opened. And next, uh, skeletonization and uh, unroofing of the super orbital fissure. And uh, at that time, we can see the inner reticular layers. Uh, so we should peel the uh, drop properly. And the meningobital artery was coagulated and cut. And um, after that, the meningobital band was cut. And the peeling continued uh, towards the uh, interreticular layers to dissect the anterior coronary process epidurally. You see that here is the uh, interreticular layers to, uh, we should uh, dissect the uh, uh, so Durapulopuria. And uh, here is an uh, anterior process, the chip of the anterior process. And the inferior lateral site of the anterior cranial process was dissected to avoid the oculomotor nerve injury. And next, uh, you can see the optic canal epidurally. You see here is the optic canal. So uh, next optic canal was opened and unroofing with a micro punch like this. So I, I do not uh, recommend the drilling uh, so, so to, to uh, open the uh, optic canal so because uh, uh, to, avoid, to avoid the heat injury uh, due to the drilling. So, and you see the remnant anterior crinoid process was anchored just uh, optic strut. So then I hollow the tip of the anterior crinoid process and remove it. And intradurally, uh, so falciform ligament was cut uh, to decompress the uh, optic nerve. And uh, uh, as usual, uh, usually, so, so detach the tumor uh, from the uh, planus sphenoidale. And next, uh, internal decompression was performed. And uh, uh, we can see the contralateral side of the optic nerve. So after the internal decompression, uh, it's easy to dissect the uh, surrounding the anatomical, uh, anatomical uh, component. From the tumor, so uh, so uh, at the times, uh, so remnants of the tumor, remnant tumor, uh, so embedded the optic canal was uh, carefully removed, like this. So this is the la uh, last in intraoperative findings. Tumor was totally removed. So next case was very rare cases. Uh, this uh, 23 years 
females suffered oculomotor nerve palsies. We have firstly diagnosed that this tumor might be oculomotor nerve neuronoma. So we have decided to perform the gamma knife therapy at first. After that, six months later, she suffered uncontrollable lateral orbital pain. Then even if incomplete uh, oculomotor nerve palsy, we have performed the tumor resection. So I will show you the video in, in these cases. So as shown the last cases, uh, in the same way, we have performed uh, extra dural uh, procedures. Sphenoid reach was drilled away and opened uh, just on the orbital apex. And uh, so you see the uh, optic apex, uh, so main orbit and uh, superorbital fissure was uh, unroofing, skeletonized and uh, unroofing to confirm the inner reticular layer. So you can see the inner reticular layer here and main orbital band was cut and uh, peering the dura propria was continued. Here is the inner reticular layer, should be dissected. And uh, uh, at this time, the, you see the sphenopalatal sinus should be spared uh, at the appropriate side. And uh, to, to stop the peeling at the point of uh, uh, where the sphenopalatal sinus drained into the cavernous sinus, uh, because uh, we have to prevent the post-operative uh, venous conjunction uh, due to the injury of the uh, sphenopalatal sinus. And the optic canal was opened. And uh, at that time, this remnant anterocrinoid process was just only anchored with the optic strut. And the next uh, optic strut was completely rejected, should be completely rejected. So, but in this case, the remnant strut uh, was not so uh, uh, obstacle, obstacle for the operative, uh, operative procedures. But uh, on the paracrinoid aneurysm cases, optic struts uh, should be, uh, will be obstacle for clip blade. So as possible, we have to uh, remove the, these, uh, the remnant optic strut as possible. So next, uh, intradurally, uh, uh, so you see the, here is the optic uh, nerve and in, uh, internal cortex and uh, cerebral tent was shaved like this. And the uh, nerve, uh, nerve fra foramen was uh, opened. You see that tumor uh, came into view. Uh, so this tumor uh, adhered with the oculomotor nerve very, uh, so, uh, because uh, uh, I think the gamma uh, effect of the gamma knife. So tumor was uh, re removed uh, piecemeal fashion like this. So at, uh, finally, the Okromota nerve was anatomically spared like this. So uh, next case, next case is, uh, the last case is uh, a uh, uh, 52 years old man suffered uh, abducens and uh, oculomotor nerve palsies and dysesthesia in trajan nerve area. So tumor mainly existed in the, uh, into the cavernous sinus. So we here show the uh, three type of paracetamol tumor embedded to the cavernous sinus. So extradural or extra caffeinous type, intradural uh, extra caffeinous type, and uh, intra caffeinous type. In this case, is classified into the intra caffeinous type. Uh, therefore, we have to extend the 
uh, peeling of the lateral capillary sinus to the gastrian ganglion. And we have to remove the uh, intracapital uh, tumor between the various uh, cranial nerves as shown in this schema, such as uh, uh, any kind of the triangle, uh, Durant's, uh, Malan, the Parkinson, and the lateral triangle, and so on. So I will show you the uh, video, operator video in this case. So after extradural anterocrinoidectomy and the addition peeling of the lateral cavernous sinus, you see that after opening the Marlans triangle, and uh, so we perform, so you see the uh, lateral triangle. So you can, uh, so here is the uh, Kawase triangle. So you, you can see the tumor uh, in, into, in the cavernous sinus. So you see the CC, CC, uh, C6 of the carotid internal cavities. So here is a cribus. So uh, in this, this operation, uh, uh, we perform the combined uh, with uh, transpenoidal approach. You see, you can contact with the suction instrument from the uh, transnasal side. So finally, we remove the remnant tumor protruded uh, to the Dolerose canal. So this is a final operative view. So uh, post or operative image shows the subtotal removal of the tumors here. And uh, post operative course was uneventful and the eye movement showed full recovery. Uh, pathological findings show the chondrozarcoma. We have performed the additional gamma knife therapy for lemon tumors. So uh, there are some surgical pitfalls in this approach. To avoid post-operative CSL leakage, we usually instituted uh, spinal drainage, uh, 100 and 150 millimeter per day. And to avoid, uh, to avoid opening the etomoidal sinus, in particular at the optic canal uh, opening. So pre-operatively, you have to check the a uh, new maturation of the anterior cranial process. And uh, second, venous infarction uh, caused by the sphenopalatal sinus injury might be occurred. We have to check the venous drainage pattern as shown in my presentation. Sphenopalatal sinus uh, should be spared on the dropper side during peeling of the lateral cavernous sinus. And to avoid the mechanical and uh, uh, heat injury for the cranial nerves, in particular uh, optic nerve, we prefer to use these micro pants uh, to uh, under process crinoidectomy. And for hemostasis of uh, the venous bleeding from the cavernous sinus, surgical cotonoid and fibrin glue is useful, of course. In addition, as shown in this slide, we Usually, uh, so perform the uh, direct injection injection of the fibrin glue in each one millimeter from the bleeding point to the cavernous sinus. It can be easy to control the venous bleeding from the cavernous sinus. Or oh, and for safe crinoidectomy, we have to assess the size and the pneumatization of the anterior process and the relationship with the sphenoid or the etomoid sinus. So contraindication for extradural anterocrinoidectomy, such as a cortical, or cortical colinoid flomen and entercrinoid osseous bridge should be assessed uh, preoperatively. In these cases, we have to select the anterocrinoidectomy intradurally. And the final uh, the problem is the uh, only source of the blood supply to the ophthalmic artery is uh, middle meningeal artery. The connection with the eye internal carotid is either absent or ob obliterated. The meningo orbital artery forming the uh, main collateral to the uh, retinal artery cannot be rejected. So now we are coming to the end of the presentation. I hope that you have gained some knowledge about these topics through my presentation. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for the excellent talk. Some of the very extraordinary cases, especially for the young neurosurgeon, very challenging for the young neurosurgeon you have shown, especially the, the cavernous sinus, the olfactory schwannoma and the cavernous sinus tumor. Uh, can you stop share, Professor? Stop share screen. Yeah, uh, I've done that. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Any questions from the participant? Dr. Liu? Uh, thanks, uh, Sachin. Uh, Professor, thank you for a nice presentation. And you told us that if you are unable or you are not putting a lumbar drain, you will uh, open the dura first uh, to do a cisterna drainage uh, before you proceed with the extra dura uh, uh, filling of the extra dura uh, uh, procedure processor. Is it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I usually, usually performs uh, uh, so lumbar drainage, lumbar drainage uh, just before the operation. Uh, so skin incision, uh, but uh, uh, in in that cases we cannot perform the uh, so lumbar drainage. So, so just I, I have to, I have to, uh, I have to uh, so dissect the cerebral fissure. After that, so uh, we we started the epidural surgical procedures. At the, at the, in that cases, yeah, we uh, usually I, perform the, yeah. Yeah, I have two, two more questions, Professor. Uh, uh, you show this one procedure, you come from both transcranial and also transphenoid. In those yeah. combined approach, yeah. which one you yeah. close first? You close the transphenoid first or you close the transcranial first? Which, which one you close first, the, the closure? Uh, you're going to close the, from transcranial first or you're going to close from transcranial first for the dura base? Yeah, uh, of course, of course. Uh, so both sides, we have to, uh, we have to uh, so uh, close, close and the sutures, uh, duras, uh, both, bo both sides. Any any sequences that you close uh, one one or together or you yes together together yeah yeah. Uh, yeah. My last question, Professor, you did show us the how important the media manager artery supply some patients uh, do not get from the ophthalmic artery. So is it routinely uh, that you we do a, a DSA for all patients to identify the uh, optic uh, supply blood supply uh, before you do this procedure, Professor? Yeah, uh, so we usually uh, perform the uh, uh, DSA angiography. So we have decided uh, so uh, to surgical procedures. So uh, as you mentioned, uh, so many uh, so ophthalmic uh, so retinal artery uh, should be uh, uh, yeah, should be from the Meninger uh, MMA. So we have to perform the anterocranioidectomy intradurally. So we have to. Uh, we have to uh, so uh, change the surgical procedures for the intradural. Thank, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Any other question from the participants? Uh, we have participants from Palestine. Dr. Mahmoud al is there. Doctor, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Yes, Professor. Doctor, can you introduce yourself and ask any question if you have? Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, my name is Mohammed Al Hubi. Uh, I'm from Gaza. Um, I am board certified uh, Arab board and uh, Jordanian board, as well as Palestinian board. Uh, I completed my residency from Qatar and Doha, uh, but I am uh, originally from Gaza. So uh, currently I am in Gaza now for the last two months. Um, so, you know, in Gaza, we are uh, around 2 million people, uh, which uh, we are under siege for around uh, 10 to 15 years now. Uh, so we have uh, only two port certified neurosurgeon in, in Gaza. Um, so the situation is a little bit difficult. 
um, we don't have uh, like uh, uh, what we have in, in because I, I did my residency in Doha in Qatar so we have like almost everything there uh, here we have like a deficiency in everything also um, especially the supplies actually so um, we are currently building up our uh, program um, um, we are like most of the cases here because of the uh, deficiency of supplies and uh, lack of the uh, lack of the surgical instrument, uh, we uh, refer them to uh, other uh, places. So we refer them either to uh, the other part of Palestine, which is the West Bank, and or we can because the West Bank is a Palestinian territory, but still uh, they have better uh, uh, better better infrastructures. Uh, or we can refer them to the to Egypt, uh, but because of the geopolitical uh, reasons, uh, you know, sometimes because under the siege, there are some people that are restricted from travel outside because of political reason. So uh, these people they are suffering, and um, we cannot we we can't do the, for them the surgery because of the situation as we discussed before from lack of instrument and. Uh, uh, lack of the infrastructure for surgery uh, and for the other uh, way uh, is to travel outside uh, Gaza but uh, you know it's sometimes difficult for them thank you okay thank you thank you thank you doctor for joining uh, maybe next time see in this webinar we have one special uh, uh, slot we do invite the young neurosurgeon what we call a YNS speaker next time you can come as a young neurosurgeon speaker from Palestine, and you can present some challenging case, which uh, you find you know difficult to operate there or some case which you have done. Sure, sure, sure. sure. I, I will thank try you, my best. You. And thank you sure. again for the invitation. Thank you for everybody. And thank you for the comprehensive lecture uh, from the doctors. That's uh, well appreciated. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Hemanta is there from Sri Lanka. Hemanta, you want to ask something? Hemanta is not hearing this. Any other question from panelists? Uh, excuse me? Yes, Dr. Chen, please go ahead. Uh, uh, fantastic uh, uh, lectures. I just have a, a simple question. And uh, you sometime after radiation therapy, the tumor um, becomes very hard and uh, sticky to resection. Do you have any um, experience or suggesting to us uh, one uh, young neurosurgeon how to uh, resect it uh, only by piece by piece, or can we use um, uh, another uh, technique? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you for your question. So, uh, uh, so to to remove to remove the uh, um, meningioma. Huh? So I will use a standard technique. So at first, we uh, have to detach and devascularization of the tumor. And uh, so under control, under control the bleeding. So we have to uh, next uh, internal decompression of the, we using QSA, QSA instrumentation. And after internal decompression, I will uh, dissect uh, the uh, surround the tumor surround, uh, from the surrounding uh, anatomical components uh, such as uh, optic nerve and the uh, uh, brain parenchyma or the uh, oculomotor nerve and so on. This is a, a standard technique. So, but uh, as you mentioned, uh, so so hard hard uh, tumor or the uh, hypervascular tumor. So I, I, I will use uh, uh, so piece piece by piece, piece by meal uh, fashion. We we dissect its uh, tumor. Uh, so for for these uh, the difficult cases, piece piece by piece. Uh, you, you understand? Sorry. I understand. Yeah. So just be pay, uh, careful to re resect the tumor piece by piece if uh, the tumor is 
uh, hard in such a uh, tough case. No another yeah. uh, uh, technique. Just to be patient to do it. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, how the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. about the uh, the QSA, you mentioned the QSA also can yeah. use the QSA in the uh, operation. Yeah. Uh, if if the after radiation the uh, the tumor very sticky and hard sticky uh, uh, sticky around the the, the um, under the bone, I mean sticky. Uh, cannot resect. It's harder to resect. Ah uh, yeah 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 yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah. sticky hard uh, yeah. to resect. Uh, yeah, stick on the uh, mini jum, um, mini jum. Stick on the dura, dura. So you have, we have to cut piece by piece. Mm. Yes, I mean, yes. After, yeah. yeah, after radiation, you know, to the tough uh, case. After after radiotherapy, no. Yes, yes. Ah ha ha ha. Yeah. Uh... So I, I, I do not experience after after the uh, so uh, tumor removal after the radiation. So we usually we usually perform the uh, so at first uh, direct surgery for the to re, uh, remove the tumor and the uh, tumor volume is uh, decreased and uh, after that. The tumor, uh, so at the times uh, of regrowth, you, you understand the regrowth of the tumor. So I will uh, so select the gamma knife or the radiation therapy after that. So at uh, yes, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I had a, a case. Uh, the patient uh, had an operation first a long time ago, and uh, the uh, the uh, uh -huh. patient had a. Uh, uh, radiation uh, for the radio residual tumor, but uh, uh, after a long time uh, uh, later, the, the tumor uh, come again, a recurrent uh, tumor uh, at the, the inside uh, location. So it's very tough. Uh, oh. we, if we can uh, resect uh, the recurrent after radiation <laughs> tumor. Yeah, such a case, oh. very tough. Oh. Oh, do we still Sorry, I do not you know. experience uh, like that, like that cases. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I got yeah. your information. Just uh, be patient. Uh, uh, uh resect the uh, tumor yeah. piece by piece. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you thank so you very much. much. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, much. Dr. Chen. It's very important yeah. to be patient in neurosurgery. surgery. If you don't have patient, you're not qualified to be a neurosurgeon, I think. Uh, uh, any other question from the panelist? Uh, yes, I have a question. Yes, Dr. Liao, please introduce yourself and please ask. Yeah, I, uh, I'm uh, Liao Zixiang uh, from uh, Taiwan, and I work in uh, Taichung Veteran General Hospital. I'm uh, an uh, attending staff now, and I have a, a question for uh, the professor. And it's a nice talk. And as to the last bit for you uh, mentioned about the uh, men meningo orbital artery anastomosis with the uh, central retinal artery, which uh, supplying the uh, optic nerve. So in every case, you do the uh, DSA to evaluate that, or what's your uh, protocol as a pre-op pre-operation? Uh, Evaluation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, your good question. So, as I mentioned in my presentation, so uh, so meaning, so when we cannot uh, so cut, we cannot cut the meaning uh, major artery. So we have to select the anterocrinoidectomy intradurally so to avoid the, to avoid the extradural procedures i i think so because uh, so uh, i yeah so uh -huh. we, we, we 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 usually evaluate it so in all cases uh, to uh, do the angiography 
Oh, traditional angiography. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank and, you. And uh, yes, yes. So some report has uh, reported that uh, obstruct uh, obstruct of the uh, so ophthalmic arteries. So 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 to evaluate the anastomosis of the. Uh, uh, many um, major artery and uh, ophthalmic arteries. So, but we do not uh, such uh, so evaluation. So, you use as you said. Uh, uh, so, traditional DSA is uh, we, we always uh, performs. Uh, so, the CTA or MRA is not enough, right? Uh, not, 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 not. Uh, so just uh, DSA. DSA. So we can we cannot uh, evaluate the such uh, so so uh, situation uh, due to the three D CTA or the MR angles. We cannot evaluate the precisely. I think so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, is there any question from the panelists, or we'll move on to the uh, case discussion. Uh, I have one question. Yes, Professor, please. Uh, thank you, Professor Otani. Uh, thank you for your great presentation. And uh, I have one question. And uh, I sometimes perform the extra dual approach with the end scope, but uh, sometimes I encounter the uh, severe breathing, uh, venous mm -hmm. breathing, even if the patient does not have the sphenal basal pattern drainage. Uh, how do you control the uh, venous uh, hemorrhage uh, at the uh, extra dural uh, area? Thank you, thank you, Professor. So, so it's uh, mo uh, so most uh, mainly problem to control the venous breathing yeah. from the extra. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, in particular, uh, from the allowance, uh, uh, so. Dissection dissects uh, allows uh, uh, so um, foramen rotund hon yes. and foramen ovale. So and the uh, peeling of the uh, dura propria. So yes. we usually counter the venous breathing from the cavernous sinus uh, and the durens or uh, drink or the uh, lateral triangle. So, but I think it's uh, it's easy easy to. Uh, control the uh, it's just uh, put the uh, fibrin glue with uh, mm -hmm. surgical cotonoid. It's easy to control the venous uh, control from the mm -hmm. lateral cavernous sinus. So, mm -hmm. but uh, I uh, so I, <laughs> I, I usually try to direct injection of the fibrin oh. glue, uh, but. Uh, just one cases I have uh, I have encountered uh, venous infarction uh, oh. due to sphenoparietal sinus uh, obstructions. I think it's uh, uh, so because of the uh, so direct injection of the cavernous sinus mm. using fibrin glue. So after that, we we just finish the such. Uh, so, so surgical procedures after that. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's easy to uh, control the venous uh, bleeding from the lateral cavernous sinus use, because uh, the, using the fibrin glue and the fibrin cotonoid. I yeah, think so. Yeah, yeah. It's not, not, not so... Uh, not so difficult to, to control. So uh, we have to so see see the breeding point. Uh, yeah. So precisely, it's important. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. But uh, sometimes the uh, breeding from the many points. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> if uh, if you're putting the south uh, uh, in uh, on the uh, lateral wall, uh, we can't go. <laughs> Or into the uh, common sense. If you, if the breathing point is very small, it's not so difficult to control the breathing. But uh -huh. uh, uh, the multiple hemorrhage occurs. Uh, the uh, stopping the breathing mm. is a so, little bit uh -huh. difficult. So, uh, so uh, 
if uh, if I encounter such a situation, yeah. I will I will first first I will uh, yeah. so head up head up. Uh, yeah. I will uh, the yes at first I will uh, yeah. so ask the uh, so anesthesiologist to to so bit bit control is uh, yeah, upside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> after <laughs> that, after that, uh, so so bleeding from the cavernous sinus is uh, uh, decreasing. Mm -hmm. So just uh, put the surgical cotton <laughs> the fibrin glue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I will I, I will perform. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, excuse me, I have, can I have another question for Professor Otani? Yes, yes, Dr. Liu, please go ahead. Yeah, Professor Otani, I have a question for you. Uh, what's your preference point to inject the tissue glue? Is between V1 and V2 or between V2 and V3 into the cavernous sinus? Yeah, thank you for your good question. Uh, one uh one is a drink drink drinks uh triangle it's a, a 0 0.5 milli, milliliter from the uh for the drinks drinks triangle and uh, the lateral triangle you see the between the uh ophthalmic uh, ophthalmic, uh, ophthalmic nerve and the superior maxillary nerve between the so so lateral triangle. So I will uh, perform the one millimeter from the lateral triangle, almost 1.5 millimeters totally, fibrin glue direct injection. You, you understand? Uh, how, yeah. how many cc do you inject each time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which time? Uh, so, so I, I will use uh, one time, one time. One time, uh, uh, zero point five. Uh, we have tissue tissue glue about two cc, uh, for one shot, right? Yeah. You, yes. Yes. We just uh, inject all the. I, I mean, how 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 much volume do you inject into the uh, cavernous sinus? Yeah. Yes. Uh, from at the Durant triangle, Durant triangle, uh, zero point five millimeter, one time. And milliliter, uh, milliliter, milliliter, zero point five okay. milliliter. Okay, okay. And, and uh, from the lateral triangle between the ophthalmic nerve and the superior maxillary nerve, so I will perform the one one milliliter, one milliliter. So it is enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I, I see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lev. Uh, I think we'll go ahead with the last uh, talk, that is the case discussion, case presentation uh, from uh, YNS from Afghanistan. She's Dr. Rihanna Ghaffari, and she's also a, a YNS member of ACNS committee from Afghanistan. So I would ask Dr. Han from Vietnam to introduce uh, Dr. Rihanna. Dr. Han? Uh, thank you, Sachin. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, good evening. Uh, uh, hi, our professor and colleagues. Uh, I would like to uh, present Dr. Rayana uh, Gafari. Uh, she's uh, did uh, her medical formation in uh, Chirac Medical University and Pisa Curative Hospital in Kabul, Afghanistan. And actually, she's a neurosurgical resident in Aliabad Teaching Hospital in Afghanistan. And uh, today, uh, she will present about uh, management of uh, penetrating uh, brain injury uh, due to gunshot in Afghanistan. Yeah. Dr. Rayana, Rayana please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Rohit, I'm not able to hear you. Can you help me, Rohit? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you stop my screen? That option now. Yeah, I got it now. Yes. Yes, go ahead, Dr. Rihanna, please go ahead. You'll have to share your screen. Yes. Yes, it's visible. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thanks so much, Dr. Han. Um, uh, unfortunately, Dr. Said Mahdi cannot be here today to present his uh, case report. Uh, and um, so I'm presenting on his behalf uh, uh, on uh, penetrating brain injuries uh, due to gunshot wounds in Afghanistan. First of all, I would like to uh, thank the Asian Congress of Neurosurgical Society, uh, Professor Koto, and also uh, Dr. Sachin for this opportunity. I think it's a network problem. We lost connection with that problem. Is Dr. Pierzod still online? No, I think we lost her. Maybe she can rejoin again. Meanwhile, Dr. Pizza, uh, you can, uh, you wanted to talk, maybe you can talk now. Dr. Rihanna can come back after your talk and present the case. I'm sorry, Dr. Rihanna, I think there was some network problem. That's why we lost you. Okay, yeah, you're there. Please go, please go ahead. It's visible, Dr. Rihanna. Please go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. Okay, can we yeah. can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Penetrating. Penetrating uh, brain injury is a type of uh, TBI or traumatic brain injury. And, and as you know, it can be defined as a projectile or a bone fragment that can reach the um, cranium or bone or, and also that can lacerate the dora and um, enter the brain parenchyma. As you know, we have uh, war wounds and non-war wounds, especially in Afghanistan, we have a lot of war wounds or, uh, due to um, gunshot wounds to the head, the pathology in civilian cases or non-war wounds, we can say it can be a near contact uh, which can have a very high thermal load that can uh, be very devastating for the patient. And also we can see um, PBIs in uh, soldiers or war wounds that can um, have a different uh, pathology than a civilian, uh, civilian uh, gunshot wound. Approximately all uh, TBI patients are uh, less than 45 uh, years old and 35% of those TBIs are uh, penetrating brain injury. As we know, first uh, Dr. Cushing was the one who introduced a treatment and of, uh, uh, for PBS or gunshot wounds to the head. Um, his theory was to um, aggressively debride, uh, debride the necrotic tissues and uh, also aggressively clean the wound of all debris, all indriven debris also, and also a uh, meticulous closure of the dora and the wound. Um, after this uh, theory, we have seen uh, less compl uh, infectious complications, uh, ceaselessly caused in the patients. But as we all know, uh, now we don't recommend uh, aggressive debridement and also removal of all foreign bodies, especially in the remote areas of the brain. Uh, we don't recommend that, but um, DORA should be closed, uh, watertight, and um, uh, also, wounds should be cleaned precisely. As we know, with uh, uh, PBS or especially gunshot wounds, we have uh, shockwave complications too, and uh, um, remote bleeding and shockwave is still a challenge to manage in, in these patients. Unfortunately, in Afghanistan, we not only have uh, war wounds, uh, but also uh, celebrity gunfires too. Uh, 
seen in some Asian countries, especially in Afghanistan. Uh, and we also have seen falling bullet injuries in patients. In Afghanistan, during uh, internal war, 55% uh, of all patients who were admitted to uh, public hospitals were of war casualties. But uh, fortunately, in uh, recent times, we have uh, seen a decrease in this percentage. Approximately 15 to 20 percent of all patients admitted are of uh, war casualties nowadays in civilian hospitals. Um, but um, uh, weapons have changed nowadays. We see uh, more sh uh, sharpener uh, fragments and in remote areas of the brain also. But uh, with uh, because of adequate use of uh, antibiotics and appropriate use of antibiotics, we have seen um, less infectious uh, complications in these patients. Um, unfortunately, public hospitals in Afghanistan do not have uh, diagnostic facilities such as CT scan. Uh, so we have to, if the patient is um, stabilized, then we have to send the patient outside of the hospital for uh, these imagings. Uh, but uh, fortunately, mortality rate has decreased, especially in patients who reach in time to tertiary hospitals or big hospitals. We have seen a decrease in mortality rates. Um, in Afghanistan, we also have uh, very uncommon causes of uh, penetrating brain injury, uh, such as suicide bombers. Uh, we have seen unexploded weapons, also mines, unexploded mines, and also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in um, celebrity gun uh, uh, fires, falling bullet injuries, we have seen a lot of these uh, nowadays. Uh, now to my case report uh, is about an 18 year old uh, patient who was uh, who presented to the emergency room with an accidental gunshot wound. Um, uh, he suffered this gunshot wound after he was uh, crossing a war stricken area. Um, on uh, admission to on in the emergency room, when we examined the patient, the patient was um, uh, unconscious and unable to uh, communicate. His Glasgow uh, coma scale was um, ten on fifteen, and uh, according to his relatives, he also had suffered a loss of consciousness uh, at the scene. Also, and he also had nausea, vomiting. Um, uh, on neurological examination, we found that the patient had uh, left side hemiparesis. His pupils were symmetric and uh, reactive to light. His BP was slightly elevated, uh, 140 by 90, and also his uh, heart rate was uh, slightly less, uh, 60 beats per minute. After uh, stabilizing the patient, Uh, we, uh, uh, in the emergency department, we uh, send the patient outside of hospital for uh, imaging uh, studies like CT scan. Uh, after that, uh, he was uh, transferred to the operating theater. Uh, when we opened the wound, we saw uh, bone fragments and necrotic tissues. Uh, they were debrided and um, after achieving meticulous hemostasis, Dora was closed watertight and also wound was cleaned and closed. Um, we can, this is, these are patient CT scan that we took. As you can see, he has a little bit of um, bleeding also in his lateral ventricle, but we can see uh, the path of the bullet that has crossed and also in, in his bone window, we can see lots of uh, also sharpness and also uh, bone uh, fragments inside uh, the brain and also very um, in remote areas of the wound. He had um, he, uh, an event, uh, eventual postoperative period. He was uh, good uh, postoperatively and he was discharged uh, fourth day postoperative. On follow-up, he was uh, he came to the hospital 14 days after his discharge. He was doing well. Uh, the wound was clean. He had uh, no CSF leakage. 
uh, and also, um, but uh, he had a mild hemiparesis on his uh, left side uh, still present there. As you can see, this is uh, the side, uh, the patient's wound after uh, surgery. In conclusion, we can say that um, in patients who are admitted to the uh, hospitals, the mortality rate has decreased in patients who reach the hospital on time. Um, urgent need for fast imaging upon arrival is still a challenge in Afghanistan, especially in public hospitals, because uh, we don't have uh, CT scan available in public hospitals. Um, most of the patients, because of uh, not good situations in Afghanistan right now, don't reach on time in, to the hospitals. Um, and also with ongoing wars for Shinil, now we have, a, a, just in recent time, we have a, a seen an increase in these uh, cases, uh, GSWs to the head and uh, to the spine uh, in uh, civilian po uh, population specifically. Lessons we have learned uh, or we have learned in uh, our department is that uh, prophylactic antibiotic usage, early resuscitation and stabilization of the patient and early uh, operative intervention in these patients, um, water type oral closure also post-operatively, good control of the ICP in these patients have uh, improved the patient's outcome drastically. And also I should mention that uh, foreign bodies, which are not easily accessible, which are in remote areas of the brain, they do not need to be removed. And also they should not be removed uh, in these patients. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rihanna. That was a wonderful presentation you've done, and I must appreciate the work you are doing, uh, though in the very low resource country, but the kind of patients you're handling and the kind of work you're doing. Being a female neurosurgeon, I think we must appreciate and you deserve a clap for that. Uh, can Thank you, you so much. Stop sharing is, yeah. Thanks. Yes, Dr. Professor Tariq Khan, you're there. You want to say something? Yes, I want to congratulate uh, Dr. Shah for an excellent presentation, really, on the firearm injuries, um, and especially these high-velocity bullets, of course, cause havoc because they develop a cavitation effect in the brain, and it is, you know, can be up to 10 times the size of the bullet. And what they have shown, their conclusion, uh, the most important point is not to go after the bullet if it is lying uh, further away, because that you can cause further damage. So really, I appreciate uh, the work and the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Anybody want to say something? Anything? So just I want to yeah. add. Uh, uh, can I? So thank you very much for a nice presentation. Thank you very much. It's very rare for our Japanese uh, the neurosurgical the cases. Just you can tell us, uh, do you have any uh, estimate pro prognosis of the patient, uh, how the, I don't know, the direction of the gunshot or what is uh, the condition, uh, which type or the which case we can save the, the life of the patient? Only you decided by the city or whatever? Uh Unfortunately, if the patient is stable enough, then we can uh, send him or her to CT scan outside of the hospital. But, uh, but in most patients who are uh, not very stable, we have to um, clean the wound without any uh, CT scan or uh, imaging available. We have to just clean the wound and uh, um, debride as much as necrotic tissue is outside, then close the wound. We cannot perform CT scan inside the hospital. So because of that. Thank you. Thank you. This is Dr. Gail Rousseau from Washington, DC. May I just say a few words? Yes, it's very uh, happy to have you, Professor Gail. Please go ahead. Oh, I'm very happy to be part of this excellent program. I, I knew anything associated with my good friend, your president, Yoko Kancho, would be 
very well done. And I, I'm particularly interested in um, the, the, the last speaker's presentation. We are very aware of the difficult challenges you have had for many years in Afghanistan, especially within the last week. Uh, you showed a picture of Harvey Cushing and you're having to do modern neurosurgery under the conditions that he had in World War I without having CAT scans available. And I just wanted to compliment you on a superb presentation. And I've also put my contact information in the chat. Uh, we want all of our colleagues, Dr. Rehana and all of our colleagues in Afghanistan, in neurosurgery and in medicine, to know that we are solidly behind you during this difficult time. Please reach out to us and allow us to find ways to help you through these difficult times. We are a neurosurgical family and we want to be of support and help to you during this time. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, you. Dr. Rosso. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Gail. Um, Anybody has any question or any comment? Uh, hi. Uh, it's me. Yes, Dr. Chen. Is, uh, this, uh, this is a very rare case in our China too. Um, about uh, uh, regarding the uh, bullet uh, keeping the brain um, my concern is uh, if the uh, bullet uh, will hurt the brain in, in the later life and uh, shall we uh, take the bullet out in the next uh, surgery? Yeah, that's my uh, question. Yeah. If it is um, in, in remote area of the brain and we cannot take it out, then we don't take uh, the bullet out um, uh, immediately. If the patient develops any complications like brain abscess or um, infection, um, epilepsy, seizures, then mm -hmm. uh, we can operate on the bullet. If the cause of that uh, seizure is that bullet, then we can operate on the bullet or bone fragment or any foreign body. But if uh, the patient does not develop any complications, then we don't remove the foreign body or the bullet or sharpness, anything. Oh, okay, I see. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Yes, Professor Pirzad, you can, yes. Yes, okay. Hi everybody, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rehana for good presentation. Uh, she's committed and very hard worker and be proud of her that we have uh, her with us and our team. And uh, just I uh, like to, say for uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Chen about the, in the first, that's, uh, there's uh, no need to remove the foreign body. If, as Dr. Rehana told, if that's complication like make a brain abscess or migrate the bone fragment, uh, the fragments, the metallic fragments, the bullet, and make a, a other, motor or sensor complication that's that show that's the migration of the bullet or uh, some bullets some uh, metallic pieces are made of lead if the lead poisoning is appear in, in the patients and it's rare indication is the psychological uh, aspects like patient has a hemiplegia or hemiparesis and he thinks that's the bullet inside the, his or her brain make him uh, disabled. For uh, this, it's indicated for operations, but under the, uh, uh, the first time, there is no indication to remove. If it's available to remove bone fragments, metallic fragments, or bullets, it's good, but not to blind, uh, to do uh, to remove the bullet or bone, bone fragments. Thank you very much. And all other uh, uh, issue, Professor Kato mentioned about the uh, explorative craniotomy. That's 
because in the mass casualties, uh, we can send a lot of cases to the uh, for CT scan. Don't, then we do, as Dr. Ayana told, then we do the brightments and uh, explorative colonotomy. We remove all the tissue, all necrotic tissue, all bone dead tissue, and close the brain. Thank you very much. Thank you. I understand your situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody has any question? I think neurosurgery is very diverse. We have certain very high-end skull-based cases, vascular cases in one part of the world, and they don't see gunshot injuries at all. And at another part of the world, we have certain very uh, disastrous traumas, but they're not equipped with doing, I think we all should come up together and bring up a neurosurgery at, the, at part of the world. Anybody has any question? Dr. Pizzat, you wanted to speak something about the neurosurgical care there in Afghanistan? Yes. Uh... If you like, that's uh, I presentation. Yeah, you have a PowerPoint. Please go ahead. Please share. Sorry about that. Sorry. Or maybe you can share your presentation. Ah, yes. Yes. Just a moment. It's coming. Yes. Yes, you're there. Thank Just you very moment. much for taking me the time. That's, uh, I like to uh, talk uh, as you ask me, uh, Dr. Sachin, about the current situation of medical issues in Afghanistan. And so I prepared this. Uh, I'm Dr. Ahmad Fawad Pizad with Dr. Richard Painda, one of my residents, and behind of the Afghanistan Neurosurgical Society. I like to uh, Talk about medical issue, neurosurgical issue, and triage, lack of infrastructure, and administrative instability, as you ask me. About the medical issue, in the last uh, week, as you know, that the government collapsed, and this is a lot of propaganda. Propaganda. This make the uh, people panic and fear about the future, about the situation of future of Afghanistan, especially women and literate people. That make a, like PTSD in our uh, country, in our, uh, to all our people. And everyone that's that not sure about the, uh, his or her future, everyone likes to escape Country, especially that's the media and the uh, experience of lost governance of uh, Taliban. This, everyone uh, think about that uh, maybe there's no human rights, no uh, women rights, no uh, minority rights. But this, everyone likes to escape, and especially also. Uh, doctors and uh, nurses are also uh, not sure, for, but uh, fortunately the situation is good. And about serious, you asked that fortunately in these days, in last weeks, we haven't mass casualties. 
It's a good uh, news. We have a mass casualties because our not uh, uh, working less previously, and uh, we haven't suicide bombers uh, nowadays. Uh, you know the reason, and we have a lot of gunshot wounds, and uh, we have a non-war trauma cases, as you, as you, I mentioned, and you know, a lot of people crowded to the airport to escape from country. And you know, it's a lot of them uh, in the crowd, uh, traumatized, uh, head injury, a spinal cord injury, falling down and falling from the airport, unfortunately, this very shame. And the transportation also is collapsed because no one uh, sure about uh, if, if there is car or trans uh, uh, is there is uh, possibility to transport the patients to hospital and also in hospital it's uh, difficult to uh, help for patients unfortunately and this my previous uh, last time governance of Taliban uh, that's with my colleagues. And uh, we have a lot of issues about the neurosurgery. And sorry, further. And uh, we, uh, we, are, we have shortcoming of instruments and uh, especially in neurosurgical supplies and uh, equipment uh, also for uh, consumable uh, material and for medicine. Uh, thank you for uh, Professor Tarak Khan. And he wrote, 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 uh, write me that hopefully by the end of next week, we will send one craniotomy, one laminectomy seat to each unit in Afghanistan for 10 centers. Uh, I would like to thank him and the Stin Center in Afghanistan. And uh, you asked me about infrastructure. Fortunately, infrastructure is good, but if he likes to extend neurosurgery centers to the provinces, we likes to train doctors, especially general uh, surgeons, to do basic neurosurgery procedures, and it needs also time and training. And But unfortunately, in this uh, last week and this last days, uh, our neurosurgery training for residents also uh, have some problems. And uh, we have uh, basic uh, neurosurgical kits that's uh, promised by WFNS Foundation and also by Tarek Khan. This uh, our infrastructure, Ali Awad Hospital. Uh, you uh, know about the uh, administrative instability. This is a very bad issue for our poor people. The brain drain. A lot of Afghans, skilled Afghans, escaped from country because they are not sure about their future. And it's not a good way to, 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 to evacuate skilled people from Afghanistan, doctors, engineers, uh, translators, uh, interpreters. But you know about uh, that fish was fishing road if we become security and stability in Afghanistan, there's no need to train to evacuate the people from Afghanistan. And we have a panic state now at this. We need neurosurgical equipment, consumable materials, medicine, diagnostic machines, especially we have a, 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 some centers, X-ray machines, MRI, CT scan, and Navicator. We need. Thank you for a project uh, that's led by Professor Ali Aziz Sultan, our uh, uh, Afghan professor, but uh, he is now in 
uh, Harvard University, seeding a project of initiative for Afghanistan and helping neurosurgery to collect money and uh, also uh, brings all uh, people together for, to help Afghanistan and we thank uh, him and grateful for him. And we have a lot of meeting how to uh, do something for Afghanistan. Uh, at, uh, for the acknowledgement, I would like to special thanks and gratitude for Professor Yako Kato. She and Japanese Neurosurgical Society about 20 years ago also donate basic nurse, neurosurgical kits for Afghanistan. And also now uh, she promised to uh, help for Afghanistan people for neurosurgery. Uh, also thanks for Professor Ali Sultan, Professor Tarek Khan from Pakistan, Professor Giriso, WNS Foundation, uh, and also Dr. Sachin for uh, make uh, uh, some meetings and also uh, works to do help for Afghanistan. And people of Afghanistan never forget your kindness and generosity. In this critical situation, Afghanistan yourselves are proud of you. Please pray for with us for peace and humanity over the world, especially in Afghanistan. We are waiting for your humanity aid. Thanks. Arigatou gozaimasa. Shukriya. Shukran. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Pitra. We understand the situation there is very critical and only uh, we can just imagine how, in which situation you are and how you are taking care of the neurosurgical care there. Anybody wants to say anything? So, uh, Professor. Yes, Professor Yokokato, please go ahead. So, uh, Professor Prasad, uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. Can you hear us? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, I, I think besides the situation, because uh, it's uh, uh, terrible, sorry for the, the current situation in your country. But uh, uh, maybe we can, we can send some uh, educational material to your countries, I think, besides uh, uh, some uh, instruments. Uh, we can for sure to send some uh, educational material for the young neurosurgeon. Yes. That's precious. Don't give up. And also, thank you very much, Dr. Tari Khan. Uh, your support uh, the, from the WFS Foundation or whatever. So I appreciate the, your uh, efforts to support Afghanistan uh, neurosurgery. Thank you so much. This is Gail Rousseau. May I also say a, a word or two? Sure, Professor, please go ahead. Yeah, so, so thank you. As always, Yoko is thinking about the people, especially young neurosurgeons and their education. And Yoko, we have been working uh, with, uh, uh, with our Afghan colleagues since at least October of last year on service through education projects. In the last week, of course, our focus has had to change to providing emergency materials. We are doing that, but we're keeping this thread of education that is so important to you and to me and, and to, to everyone in our profession. And so we do plan to continue to work toward an Afghan-centered uh, international mm -hmm. webinar so that they can share their experiences, we can share ours and continue this work. We will involve you, of course, in the Asian Congress with that. We are also particularly interested in the situation of our women neurosurgeons, neurosurgery residents and medical students in Afghanistan and are working with our colleagues to be sure that they are safe and that their education continues. So let's all work together on this. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Gail. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. 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 Th
you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, Professor Ali Sultan is there. Are you there, Professor? Uh, I am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, Professor. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Dr. Ghaffari. I'm uh, so proud to be an Afghan <laughs> when I hear you speak. That was a beautiful presentation and well thought out. Um, I would also uh, like to thank my brother, Dr. Pirzad, um, who's, who's, who's the true hero. Uh, I left, my parents were the brain drain. Uh, when the Russians first invaded the country. So a number of us, I was six years old at the time when we escaped and went to Pakistan and Germany and then finally to the U.S. Um, for some, this is new, but for a number of us, including Dr. Pirzad, Afghanistan has been at this point multiple times. Uh, with with the Russians, with the civil war, with the U.S., uh, with the Taliban, it, it, it's a recurring thing, and the politics changes, but the human need remains the same. Uh, this has been especially an emotional time because trauma refer resurfaces in, in in similar ways, and although. I am nowhere near what they're feeling there in my homeland, uh, my motherland, essentially. Uh, it, it, a lot of us uh, are very, very uh, empathetic to what's going on. Um, let me just talk about two things. One is the beauty of our specialty. And I forgive, forgive me, this is an impromptu talk. Uh, and the second is about caution. Uh, the beauty is <laughs> so, so, like I said, uh, I was raised in the United States. I am a Bostonian now. Uh, my kids were born here. I've been to Afghanistan a couple of times as a neurosurgeon to help uh, bridge a relationship and provide any form of assistance. When COVID start, as Gail said, the beauty of technology led to a beautiful human chain that started. And it was initially started as an educational project. And it started with Dr. Key Park from the Harvard uh, Global Surgery Initiative to Dr. Gail Rousseau, who is on G4 and WFNS and Fiends, to Dr. Tarek Khan, who's in Peshawar, uh, to uh, Sachin and Dr. Kato in Japan and in India, uh, and then connected to the beautiful people of, of, of my homeland, Dr. Pirzad, Dr. Manawari, Dr. Kais. And we started to explore capacity uh, and tried to build a framework of where were the neurosurgical centers that served the public, that were academic, that treated people irregardless of ethnicity, of gender, of religion, but were able to help people. And we were able to figure out through Dr. Pirsad's guidance and Dr. Manari, key centers around the country that had this and had a neurosurgeon at the helm. And we were bridging this educational program when the current humanitarian crisis happened. And just like the chain that was created, the human chain that was created to take us out of the country when I was in six years old, the same beautiful human chain has allowed us to have insight into the country and our trajectory, as Gail said, changed from putting together an educational project for the time being to crisis management and, um, and filling in gaps. And what are those gaps? Can we go to the next slide, Sachin, please? The gaps are not necessarily intelligence, willpower, or, or, or the ability to perform. This is 
uh, Dr. Manawari's team when I first went to visit them in 2006, as soon as I was a young attendee. And I promise you to God <laughs> that their, their residents were able to operate like I was because um, they were so well uh, trained in having the least amount of equipment. Uh, they could see things that I needed a microscope for. Uh, and, and so that wasn't the issue. The issue was a lot of the resources, right? The county hospital, this one that I was at, Dr. Pierzad Hospital, which is the main university hospital in the capital, doesn't have a CAT scanner. They don't have equipment. The equipment I took in 2006 is the only piece of equipment uh, that has lasted. They don't have instruments to take care of people. They don't have CAT scanners to image. This boy, 16-year-old boy, we had to go across town to a private place uh, to, to, to get a CAT scan with three months of salary and put in a cab and brought back. He almost died from an epidural hematoma from, from, uh, from a head injury. Uh, so th th this is a gapping, gapping, <laughs> a big need. We were on the phone with Siemens this, this week to talk about scanners, to talk about uh, robotics, to talk about a number of things, but the basic equipment isn't there. They can't scan people to what's going on. And you just heard exploratory craniotomies for gunshot wounds. Can we go to the last slide? Um, and this is something uh, my uh, dear friend, <laughs> uh, Gail taught me about, right? If you see these centers around the country, right? And you solve the problem of access to neurosurgical care, led by neurosurgeons who by definition are outliers, and you solve those logistical problems for neurosurgery, you unravel the access issues, then you've created a pipeline, right? You've created a way that can be translated from neurosurgery to general surgery emergencies, to trauma surgeries, to OBGYN and, 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 and uh, crises in a country, in a country, that has the highest trauma rates before this crisis, before this crisis, and the highest infant mortality rates across the world, the entire future of these beautiful cultured people is being choked out. Their seeds are being squashed. So the caution, the caution that I say and that I beg for is to be careful about politicizing these things. In our fundraising efforts, we've come across and there are sanctions that are coming down the line that may choke the country from outside resources during a time that the need is the greatest. We are humanitarians. We are doctors at the core of everything we do. We address one of the four basic pillars of society. Food, shelter, uh, safety, and health care. Let's chip away at that. Thank you so much to Professor Kato. Thank you so much to Tarek Khan. Thank you so much to Gail. Thank you so much for this organization to giving the Afghan people and the Afghan doctors a platform. Uh, we are in the midst of our fundraising event. Uh, and if anybody is, uh, has ideas or help or anything like that, this is the time that we needed more. There may be sanctions coming down the line and our human chain through Tarak Khan uh, can, God willing, uh, 
get things to the most vulnerable people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ali. We truly understand the situation there. We are fully in solidarity with support for Afghanistan. If Professor Yokokato, you want to say anything? So thank you very much. Uh, the very nice uh, explanation of what happened in Afghanistan now and also the history of your life. I, I think it is so sorry to hear that. So, but I think uh, 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 viewpoint of the education for young doctors, I think uh, uh, we should uh, consider how we can support them because uh, donation of the instrument and machine, I, I think it's uh, uh, very important things. And uh, also the money can solve uh, those, uh, uh, the, the problem, but the, uh, it's really how we can educate the young doctors. Uh, that is uh, uh, very important things. Uh, only the, the donation of the instrument is almost nothing. Sometimes I, I think uh, uh, we should consider uh, how we can receive the, the YNS and also the, the give some uh, the knowledge and skills for young doctors. Uh, that's my concern. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor. Uh, it's it's uh, the primary reason that we bridge this gap is exactly what you are talking about. And God willing, we will continue on that track. There, as Gail said, uh, there's been a recent need identified uh, through our contacts in Afghanistan. And so in parallel, this is what we're doing, but we were planning uh, the, one of the first neurosurgical papers from Afghanistan written by Afghan doctors. Uh, we were planning the first uh, symposium on trauma and, and other things hosted and originated in Afghanistan with uh, and this platform that you've created in terms of fellowship. So education, as Dr. Pirzad said, Fisher, Fishing Pole, uh, is, is the sustainable way, uh, 100%. Uh, right now, uh, we're also trying to stop the hemorrhage. Thank you. Thank you for your support, Professor. Thank you. Hey, Professor Darin Khan wanted to say anything. Yes, thank you very much. I think uh, exactly this whole forum from the Global Neurosurgery team started to improve the uh, both the education and uh, the equipment need. And uh, I think we were slowly going towards the webinars, etc. But Professor Yoko, your team has already organized these very nice webinars now for the Afghans. Uh, students and for the uh, students from uh, 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 Yangon, from Burma, Myanmar, uh, I think they are going to help a lot in, in the future also in presidency also. And I remember distinctly, you asked me a number of times to send you names of Afghan young neurosurgeons so that they can visit uh, your, uh, your hospital. Hopefully things will settle down uh, uh, in the near future and that these young neurosurgeons can travel to you in Japan and education materials can be transferred. And hopefully someday we may all be sitting in Kabul or someplace and, and have a conference there for that. So, but I think everybody together is doing a very, uh, very good job. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Professor Tariq Khan. Dr. Pilzat, you wanted to say anything? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for Professor Ali Sultan for a uh, good presentation and uh, sharing uh, <coughs> his memories. And uh, I 100% agree with Professor uh, Yako Kato about the educate young neurosurgeons, young, neuro doc uh, young doctors. And uh, we also have plan, as I mentioned, that also to, to uh, train uh, general surgeons for remote area that they do some basic 
uh, neurosurgical uh, procedures for life saving the uh, needed patients. Also, thank you for uh, Professor Tarkhan. Uh, we uh, also this uh, global neurosurgery and uh, we are the foot of the hill and you are the top of the hill and uh, for sharing your experience, uh, your knowledge, be welcoming and uh, when the situation become stable and good and we find the way how to sense uh, young new surgeons, we sense uh, uh, our young new surgeons for trainings to uh, scale with uh, new techniques and also uh, become familiar with the new instruments and materials. And uh, thank you for uh, Professor Tarkhan for nice wishes. Uh, we hope that one day peace become in our country and we invite you all to our country for uh, make uh, uh, conferences, symposiums, and uh, share our memories uh, about uh, near surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, Af Af Afghans uh, uh, are the best hosts in the world. It's embedded in our culture that when you come to our house, uh, that everything is yours and you're treated like a king. The hospitality and taking care of guests is paramount to our culture. Uh, so I look forward, inshallah, to come uh, at some point again. Sure, definitely. God willing, that will happen, Professor. Anybody wants to say anything before we close? Yes, Professor Pizza, please go ahead. Yes, okay. Uh, just I like to uh, mention about uh, Dr. Uh, Ali mentioned about the, there is a lot of talented Afghan people, but uh, the situation is not good. We proud of Dr. Ali, Dr. Jawed, uh, and also uh, Dr. Hakim Munib, that's our, our Afghan neurosurgeons that they serve outside the country. We proud of them. But unfortunately, the situation is make uh, our neurosurgeons, especially our young neurosurgeons, and, and uh, behind the borders of trauma. And we were face everything, every time with uh, trauma. And uh, we have a lot of talents, but unfortunately, like uh, Professor Kelly also mentioned about uh, uh, Afghans' escapes. Especially, trends. we train the Afghans, uh, graduated, uh, and uh, after completed residency, they escaped because they are, no, no, and they are not sure about their future. And we are hope that one day the peace becomes and uh, we uh, train with your uh, nice hands, and especially our young neurosurgeons, uh, future uh, uh, senior neurosurgeon will be in Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Yes, Professor Tariq. Um, yeah, so just uh, you know, party thing. Last time uh, in end of 2019, we took Gail Russo up to the border of Afghanistan at Torkham. Next time we will take her into Afghanistan to Kabul and the rest of you soon. Okay, sure, sure, yes. I look forward to that. <laughs> I think you can bring her to India also. She can have a big tour. Mm. And uh, hi, it's me. Thanks for your all. And uh, I want to say something. Um, I feel uh, very sad when I hear the disaster in Africa and uh, my heart is broken and my tears coming. <laughs> Uh, and uh, 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 regarding the, uh, in, in my country, uh, our uh, information and news uh, tell us uh, that Africa is very uh, backward country, and uh, the girls uh, ha have no opportunity to uh, receive the education, and uh, the women have to uh, wear the mask uh, and on the when when they walk on the street. And are you safe? So my question and uh, um, my concern is, are you safe? Um, your doctor is safe and the woman is 
are safe. And if your hospital can run in normally, uh, my heart broken to my uh, sincerely. Uh, God bless you, uh, every uh, people in your country. Are you safe? Uh, Dr. Pizad? Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah but uh, yes, yes, you. Now, nowadays it's good, uh, as I mentioned, nowadays it's good, uh, but uh, we are not about the future. Thank you for uh, you are uh, mentioned our, your empathy, and uh, thank you for your sympathy for Afghanistan. Thank you. Okay. Now, nowadays, we are, it's good, yes, yes. I, as I mentioned, nowadays we haven't uh, uh, mass casualties, uh, no suicide bombers, and uh, uh, it's in the this is the situation is uh, rather good than before because uh, that's the government collapse. And uh, thank you, Chair. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And um, uh, in last uh, uh, webinar, uh, Dr. J. J. Werner uh, uh, asked if he has an uh, opportunity to come to China for the uh, training. Uh, I talked with Dr. Wu in Huashan Hospital. Uh, he came, uh, he told me uh, uh, Huashan Hospital has a plan. Uh, for the international uh, 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 neurosurgeon train, training trainer, so if you want to um, uh, come to China to come to Shanghai for the uh, neurosurgeon training, uh, please contact me. Uh, maybe uh, this year we have no opportunity uh, to the uh, international uh, travel travel, but the next year maybe we have opportunity. We can. Um, in, enroll the uh, enroll the international uh, training trainer. Uh, till now, I haven't received Doctor Jewoner uh, Jewoner's the uh, CV and the application. Uh, I have no idea what's the problem with the e email address or something like this. So, if um, you have any information, uh, let uh, make a contact. <laughs> uh, understand. Dr. Akato? Uh, yes, yes, very good. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah. Well, we are very uh, welcome you uh, come from the uh, off the world uh, to uh, Huashan Hospital for the training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, sure. Renji Hospital has no such uh, plan. Mm -hmm. But Huashan has a, a national um, neuro, uh, neuro disease uh, um, center. It's a, it's a very big uh, center. So they have such a uh, plan. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, so Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. So I would summarize today's day. I think we had two excellent talks by two great Japanese neurosurgeons, Professor Kazuhito Take Uchi, gave an excellent talk about endoscopic pituitary surgery and showed us a few of its excellent cases. And the take-home message was to close the dura. Professor Naoki Otani from Japan also taught us about direct surgical access to the paracellular tumors. And few of the surgical cases we, he showed was fantastic. The highlight of today's program was a case presentation by a promising lady neurosurgeon from Afghanistan, Dr. Rihana Gafari. And Dr. Pirzad and Dr. Ali Sultan and Dr. Tariq and thank you very much for briefing us about the situation there. Hope we'll all, we'll all work together and hope there'll be peace soon in Afghanistan. Anybody want to say anything? Dr. Liu or Dr. Professor Yoko Tato? I know. So we are all family, so now then we can support in, in any way uh, in the future. Uh, it was a wonderful webinar wonderful tonight. Thank you very much. So every two thank weeks, you, we will see you again. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Liu, you want to say anything? No, no, nothing. Sure. So that's our next webinar. That will be on the 12th of September. And we have uh, Professor Narcos Tatagiba from Germany who is going to talk about tips and tricks in retrosigmoid vestibular schwannoma surgery for the young neurosurgeon. And Professor Tadashi Watanabe who is going to talk about endoscopic keyhole approaches. 
and we hope we get one uh, wireless from Palestine who's going to talk about, who's going to have a case presentation. Thank you very much. Please join us on 12th of September at uh, 7.30 Japan time, 3 o'clock Afghanistan time, 4 o'clock India time, and 5 o'clock Myanmar time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 What is that? Uh, this is this is a lady with a uh, uh, Oh my God! Okay, uh, yes. I understand. And so I understand. He, he, she is going to for a CT scan. Yes, like this for, uh, Yeah, yeah. This this was the previous situation in Afghanistan. Okay. okay I heard. Uh, okay, I heard the Taliban will kill the woman uh, who uh, received a well education. It's it's true. Uh, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, but nowadays uh, I hear that they change the mind, and uh, we hope that. Uh, but we see in the future. Doc, yeah. Dr. Chen, uh, Dr. Chen, just uh, yeah. one, uh, uh, just the, the again the caution to uh, to to politicizing things. Uh, I, I don't know this regime. I don't know the last regime, but I will tell you that healthcare and the service to people are always needed. My aunt, uh, Sohaila Sadiq, who was the minister of health at some point, uh, is a surgeon, a general trauma surgeon who worked when the communists invaded the country, mm -hmm. who worked when the Taliban took over the country, who worked when the civilian uh, civil war happened, who worked and came here to visit uh, Bush <laughs> at the time when the Americans, uh, when we as Americans sort of came to, and she recently, God bless her, passed away uh, from, from COVID but she is a woman and more importantly, she's a doctor that there's a specific humanitarian need, no matter who's in government, no matter how Western or Eastern or strict, or this is what happens in Syria. This is what happens in North Korea. This is what happens in our, when, our, when our brother in, in, in Palestine is telling you. The human need is, is the same. Yeah. And uh, e even more in these situations, e even more. Thank you. It, I think in such times, we all of us, we generally forget the oath we have taken when we graduate from the Institute. We should remember our oath. Doesn't matter whoever it is, it's your friend, not friend, it's your enemy. But when they come and seek the medical help from you, your duty is to give the medical help. That's it. Nothing else. Politics and everything is at par. So thank you very much. We had a wonderful day. We'll Let's see you on 12th of September. Let's yes, yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, just, yes. Uh, just for last. That's us, Professor Ali uh, mentions. Uh, we serve for our needed people, not for uh, the regime, for uh, not for uh, politician or for governors. We serve for people, and we don't uh, related to politics. We are free and likes to serve our people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Be safe, Dr. Ruhana. Be safe. Thank you, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Rihanna. Nice, thank nice you. presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bye -bye. Thank you. To see you again. See thank again. you. See thank you, you Professor Yokota.
Dr. Hemant, uh, why were you so quiet today? Thank you. So next time you can participate in the discussion, Dr. Hemant. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> sure. Thank you. You are our leader from Sri Lanka. So please, yeah. please encourage our other Sri Lankan young neurosurgeons also. Thank Definitely. You. Sure. So Dr. Rohit, thank you very much, Rohit. Uh, you can stop the YouTube. I think Rohit is already sleeping. So uh, Dr. Mohammed al Hubi from Palestine, from Gaza, sorry. Are you there? I think he's also there. Okay, so thank you all, we'll wind up. Thank you, thank you thank everyone, you. thank you. Thank you.